Welcome to Inside Cottonwood. I'm Mayor Diane Jones, your host, and we are talking with Dave Blauert and Keith Vogler today about the new, all new Verde Valley Military Service Park. And this is something that we've been working on as a team of people, community members now for a couple of months. Well, about five months. I about think. five yeah. months. Time flies and meeting every week. So this <laughs> yep. is serious business, taking a lot of time. And um, I think we'll go ahead and start off. Let's start off with a little bit about the two of you. And um, you're both Marines. Right. And you want to talk a little bit about being in the Marines or your service. Well, Keith? Let, let Dave go first. He went in before I did. Dave yeah. was first. Okay. Okay. I joined the Marine Corps in 1962. Oh, and, you didn't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, joined the Marine Corps Reserves in 1962. And then uh, when the uh, Vietnam Token Bay incident happened, I went from the reserves into more active duty because I was an instructor in the Marine Corps for combat engineering and spent two uh, short terms during that process and then maintained them around my reserve time until 1970. So that's okay, my history. And you were a contractor in Sedona all these years, or you are a contractor in Sedona, have built a lot of, <laughs> a lot of infrastructure, homes and, and those sorts of things in the Sedona and Verde Valley areas. I know Sedona was a prime place to be at that time. I, right, I, in uh, the arrived, 70s. And yeah, I arrived in Sedona in 1961. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> when so, it was just a way baby town yeah. then. <laughs> sure a, has changed, hasn't yeah, it? Sure has. Yes, yeah. as all towns have in Arizona oh, yeah. during that time frame. And how about you, Keith? Well, I went to Marine Corps in 1960, 55 years ago this year. Okay, 55 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and you served in? And I served five years. Okay. I got out uh, August of 65. Okay. Uh, just about the time Vietnam was really going hot and heavy is when I got out. Mm -hmm. And the uh, biggest mistake I ever made. Mm -hmm. but, you but, wish now that you would have stayed in? Well, I should have stayed in the reserves anyway because mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of camaraderie. Right, absolutely. So, matter of but fact, now you're in the Marine Corps Reserve and you do a lot of volunteerism, Toys for Tots yeah. is one thing, and now this military service park is another. And So let's talk a little bit about, and you, you've lived in the Verde Valley since 1961. Yes. Uh -huh. And you've lived here? Since 2003. 2003. Right. I and lived in before Arizona that, it was since 65. Since 65, and yep. Flagstaff for quite a number of yes. years. Yes, yep. Okay, so um, Dave, go ahead and share a little bit of the history. How did this come to Cottonwood in the Verde Valley, a military service park? Because you'd ha already had a little bit of experience with that. Well, uh, I, I have, uh, let me start out in Durango, Colorado, where I joined the Marine Corps League there. Okay. Uh, we built a service military park there. In fact, that was a memorial park. And we went through the process of how all the good parts and bad parts and what it took to get the thing there and, and the fundraising part. And then, uh, then I also had, that was a secondary home, then my primary home was in Sedona. And then I came to Sedona there and started the Marine Corps League with several other guys. And one of the things I wanted to do is do a military park in Sedona. So I can honestly say I raised every penny for the Sedona Park. And Mary, you were there during I her was, dedication. I was. And it's a beautiful park, just very attractive and peaceful and meaningful. Yeah, thank you. I was <laughs> quite proud of it. But in the meantime, uh, I met Keith and his wife through the Marine Corps Toys for Tots golf tournament. And, and that's Chris Vogler. Everybody knows Chris. She's <laughs> always in the community yep. and getting toys for kids. Yeah. And money. <laughs> and toys and money. And Donations. And then, uh, and, and I came down here last Christmas and witnessed uh, what a success that was and what a great thing that was. So I asked Keith if I could join the Marine Corps League down here and transfer from Sedona down here. And, and our conversations kind of moved into the direction and thanks to the city of Cottonwood, we had a great support between Keith and yourself and and Mr. Foss, Frost? Yes, yeah. Richard Faust. Faust, okay, mm -hmm. I properly pronounce that. And one thing 
led to another and here we are just about completed our design I think we have completed it just some of the specifications and we'll start into the process of putting the pieces together and do another park and this is going to be the best park I think I ever worked on well that's exciting yeah. to do all your experience it's each time you learn of oh well maybe I could do this better yeah. or build a better mouse trap or whatever yeah. and and right. it's always good to be able to pull off on somebody else's experience. You know, he, he's done the high points, he's done the low points. We can learn from the low points and, and uh, emphasize the high points. And I, I think uh, the, more he, the more contributions we can get out of Dave, I think uh, we're going to suck them dry, I think. Right. Yeah. Well, he sure has. He's been um, <coughs> traveling to Cottonwood every week and certainly being supportive and offering direction and experience to help the team here. And we have really quite a team. We meet at the Cottonwood Recreation Center once a week. And uh, it's, I mean, people are very dedicated into oh, to yeah. having this project move forward. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's great to have such support. The city here and all the other groups within the city, the VFW and American Legions and stuff. And I couldn't believe it. I, I worked really hard and the other two programs and we didn't have uh, the support that we're having here and it's uh, it's really makes it easy. Yeah. It's just amazing when we built, um, when the Homes for Our Troops built the house for Jordan Maynard, Sergeant Maynard who was a Marine, is a Marine, and um, built the home because of his injuries in Afghanistan. It's amazing how many people, Oh yeah. yeah, I mean that was a huge team of people in the community yeah. And uh, we raised the most money of anyone in the nation for a home right here in the Verde Valley. Very successful. That was very successful, and, and I know you guys were working on that. So we have VFW Post 7400 here in Cottonwood is, is a team member. American Legion Post 25 that's here in Cottonwood. American Legion Post 93, I believe that's Camp Verde. That's correct. Um, we're working with them. And they're working with us, American Legion Post 135, and that's the Cornville Post. That's correct. And Marine Corps League um, number 1176, and that's Cottonwood? No, it's Verde Valley. It's Verde Valley, yes. okay. We have members from Rimrock, Camp Verde, Cottonwood, Okay, Clark Hill. and so, so Sedona yeah. has their, Marine, their own Marine Corps Reserve, and then it's the Verde Valley has one also, is that correct? That's correct, yes. Okay, yep. all right. And then, of course, we have the Cottonwood Parks and Recreation, and a little bit later, we'll have Richard Faust come into the interview and share some information about the city's participation. Which, let me break in here for a minute. Okay. You know, we, we've, we had a couple of meetings. Uh, I don't know how many people there were involved. It doesn't really matter that much. We went over to VFW and had a couple of meetings, and, and, uh, and uh, Richard was in the meetings, and he does an excellent job. And, and we said, you know, we have to get up in front of us. We, we, he said, let's find some places where maybe that we can get some something from the city. Well, we mm -hmm. looked at three or four places. And, and that was a location. We and, were looking a for location, a location. Yeah. And then we ended up at Garrison Park. And, 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 uh, and this, then we went up front of the city council with a proposal. And, and gee, it was overwhelming, the support. Oh, our city council it is very supportive fantastic. of veterans and the military. Yeah. And, and then being able to use the parks and rec admin room, you know, their, their uh, meeting, the meeting room, room for, yes. for uh, weekly meetings. Mm -hmm. My, it's, it's, it's really fantastic yeah, what's the going city's, on there. The city's been a partner, but we also appreciate all those who partner with us and and doing these things too. And after a while, when Richard comes out, we'll talk a little bit about the discussion of, you know, do we want to have a city or a town or someone kind of be um, supporting this because of the long-term um, long-term care of right. such a facility and yeah. um, the volunteers come and go their lives change or right. they get busy doing other things or uh, something happens to change their ability to volunteer so it's always good to think that a city or a town will be there in, in perpetuity yeah. to take care of this facility that we'll be creating so um, it's time right now for a little break, and we will go ahead and uh, bring Richard out. We want to thank Dave for being here today. Thank you. And for uh, you just have so many wonderful contacts, and you're a great fundraiser, and we, we have seen that through the different parks and 
You're also a member of the Sedona 30, and that's a great team of, of people right. that are uh, going to be president this year, as I understand yes, it. Yes, I am. <laughs> and a great uh, bunch of folks that care about community, work for community, do for community, and and provide funding and fundraising for community. So, Well, thank you for doing your support. Without this, uh, we learned through the deal in Durango, Colorado, we the city has to play the long-term mm -hmm. part of this. And thanks to you, Mayor, and, and the, your supporting staff. That's all I want to say. Right. And Richard, I mean, he'll be coming out in a short while to talk about the city piece of this, but he is working with him throughout the years. I've known Richard. I was on the Parks and Recreation Commission in the 1990s, I think. Mm -hmm. So I've known him for such a long time, and he is such a patriot. Yeah. He really cares about veterans and the military, and I, if there's something going on with a veteran that, you know, there's been five veterans that have lost parts of all four limbs in the Afghanistan war, and I just, I'm very supportive of them and, you know, kind of follow their stories, and, and they're so brave and so strong and have such great attitudes, and if I need something, Richard's always there for me. Richard, you know, this guy needs this or this, and he's right there in support, so it's a very special person and quite a patriot. Good to work with. Absolutely. Excellent. Thank you, Mayor. Absolutely. So thank you for being here. Thank you for all you're doing for, for this park. And mm -hmm. I know you're going to be right there with us till we see it completed. So Can't wait. All right. <laughs> so we'll take a break, and we will be right back. store your guns properly. I'll feel safer when I'm playing outside. Safer when walking home. I won't have to tell so many family members. I'm sorry. I won't hear as many scary stories. And I won't have to tell my kids. This isn't a drill. Please. Please, do it for us. Your family, friends, and neighbors are all counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always lock it up. Visit ncpc.org. Orkin has pest control down to a science. When your business chooses Orkin's Precision Protection Program, you get a tailored pest control program for your specific industry and environment. Your business can benefit from over a century of experience, training and scientific knowledge that define the Orkin man. Maximum protection, minimum exposure, backed by one of the industry's most comprehensive guarantees. Choose your locally owned and operated Northern Arizona Orkin and get more than an exterminator, get an expert. Welcome back to Inside Cottonwood. I'm Mayor Diane Jones, your host. And we want to thank Dave Blauert, who came to be with us during this interview and catch us up on the history of the military service parks here in our local area and also in Durango, where he started. So we have with us, um, we have Keith Vogler, and now we have Richard Faust, who is the Community Services General Manager yes, that's for the City of Cottonwood, and he runs our Parks and Recreation programs and the Recreation Center, our beautiful Recreation Center, yes. that um, I think I was just mentioning that I was on planning and zoning years and years ago, and I think this was a vision of people who lived in our city for 20, 25 years before we actually got the Recreation Center in 2010. That's correct. After lots of work, right, Richard? A lot of work. <laughs> it was great. Right. So we are here to talk about the Verde Valley Military Service Park today. And, and uh, Luke Sefton is also a person from um, Luke Sefton Engineering. And I was, we were just talking at break about the big, tall, American flag that this project is going to have um, and it was something that we had to I mean the city uh, city council donated the land but we worked closely with the Yavapai County Board of Supervisors I know Keith Keith and Richard have been to many meetings we wanted to really keep them informed because although the project is not on county property it's right contiguous, it's right yep. next to it, and yes. we wanted to be sure that the Board of Supervisors, you know, 
that they were aware of what was happening, that they approved of it, and they did. But let's talk a little bit about the flag and the engineering that's going into it. Well, the flag is, is going to be, what, 65 feet high? I don't remember the exact dimensions of the flag. Can you tell? It's so, going to be, um, it'll be really close to 18 by 25 feet. So. 18 by 25 right. feet. So it's, it's going, going to be a, be a very flag large and, and, flag. And, uh, I think the I think the depth of the of the foundation is something like six or eight feet, and then the diameter is roughly that same thing, and and uh, then that's going to be surrounded by five military flags, each right. one of which is going to be thirty feet high, uh, so it won't be nearly the the size or anything, right. but that's okay. This flag is going to be visible from a long oh, way. Oh, yeah, drones and so we and had, and, and it's going to be quite a landmark, I think, for the city. It'll be a great landmark and, and a great honor to our military, our veterans, our military, and, and all those who are patriots and care about these things. Um, so we really had to like get the best engineer we could to make sure this flag's going to stay up. And Luke Sefton has yeah. engineered this this project, and so we know it's going to be safe. It's going to stay where it's put, and it'll be very sturdy. Yeah, Luke does a good job. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk a little bit, I guess, about. So first of all, you looked at Richard went out and he searched. What you had five properties that you were we looking did, at. We actually did three. We three looked properties. at three um, properties, okay. mainly for area, uh, mm -hmm. because we were looking at something that would at least contain the, the military service park area, which is um, like what Keith indicated. There's uh, there's going to be five service flags five monuments that will be dedicated in that context also for a military pod. So there will be those and and then also the American flag and the state flag will be up at the end with the POW flag and be a place basically for people to rest as they walk through the park and then look back on and, and um, they can take a look at um, the, the flag settings and everything else. So it's just kind of a, it's gonna be a really beautiful setting. But um, when we took a look at originally, we were looking at possibly the cemetery frontage uh, property uh, as well as Riverfront Park. Those two areas did a lot for uh, the size of the park area that we were looking at for a military service park. But um, I think that the majority of everybody when we met um, with the planning committee uh, for the, uh, the military service group, they all immediately stuck right directly like glue to Garrison Park because of its centrality. Uh, it's very central within the community. A 65-foot flag will stick up like a sore thumb, which is great <laughs> because that's what we want. Mm -hmm. We want the we, we want, want to draw glory to attention to. That's to right. It. We want we want the flag uh, to to describe exactly what it is. It's a place for military pride and service and dedication and honor. And so it was really kind of neat that, like you had indicated, we went to the county and. Um, it was on their uh, their consent agenda, and Chip Davis, uh, Supervisor Chip Davis, took it off of consent agenda, and we were wondering, oh, well, well I wonder why, and <laughs> it was to honor, you know, again, mm -hmm. those in service, and he thought it was just the most grandiose idea, and all of the supervisors supported it 100%, and how wonderful of a thing that this will be right next door, and of course, when um, Supervisor Davis looks out his office, you'll be able to see that those flags, and he'll be able to see the right. Marine Corps flag. His sons also served in the Marine Corps, <laughs> and so I think that that's one of the reasons why Chip is so emphatic about that, and as I well think... as well as you and, and right. Paul. Right, and I did. His dad also serve. I think he, I'm he did. His yes. dad was also in the service. Yes. So, yeah. So this is going to be. Um, it's going to honor our military personnel. Now, it's it's not really what you call a veterans park. It's a military service park. And so sometimes you think of these parks being for someone who died yeah. in service. And it is for them. But it's also for anybody who has served at all. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Sure. It's not a memorial. Yes. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't be able to be in there. But I, right. I can be in there. Uh, because it's a it's a military park. Mm -hmm. You're a veteran. You have to have an honorable dis. You have to be discharged under honorable conditions. That's all we ask. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so medical. That's the same thing as as that's an honorable discharge also. And I know Richard's father was in the in Korea. So mm -hmm. you know we can honor him too. Um, mm -hmm. So there, it's it's really not just a memorial. It, it's mm -hmm. and there's going to be other pieces of the park. We hope eventually we think that uh, are going to honor other parts of the military, maybe canines for one thing. Right, right. Um, maybe the USO is maybe another thing. Mm -hmm. So 
That's so the USO, about, yeah. yeah, we have Terry Frankel as one of our members, and she and her sister, the Double Mint Twins, yeah. did a lot of USO shows in 1968 during the right. Vietnam War. They went over and sang to the troops, and, and yep. uh, she's an amazing person. She is. And is part of this group that's planning this, and we all thought a USO pod would be... Yeah, right. That really would be neat, you yeah, know. Right. So do you want to talk about the different pods that we're planning. Well, uh, one yeah, for, for each lack branch of, of the service. Yeah, for lack of another name, I guess, yeah, pods. It, we're go each, each branch of the service is going to have a flag, like I said earlier, mm -hmm. and then each branch of the service is also going to have a, a, a pod or, or a granite structure mm -hmm. that uh, is, that's where we'll sell uh, the opportunity for somebody to put and have their name inscribed mm -hmm. on this, on these structures is going to be one for each branch of the service. Um, there'll be scattered throughout the park. Um, so there's no ranks or anything that'll be on there, it's just a name. The name of the person. And then there are some additional pods that we, mm -hmm. or spaces that we've set aside or are going to be setting aside mm -hmm. uh, for other opportunities like the USO or like canines. the canines mm -hmm. or Korean group and, mm -hmm. and uh, Sedona is really interested in, in uh, having They've something been a to, partner also. Uh, to, to honor the Korean War veterans. And, and the Korean and, uh, War, they call that the Forgotten War, yeah, is what I've read. That's right, on. because it, it, you can hear people talk about World War II and Vietnam and, and more current Grenada, everything else. You don't hear anything don't mentioned, hear or you very seldom hear anything about the Korean War. Mm -hmm. and, and that's unfortunate because I don't know how many thousand, 50 some odd thousand died there mm -hmm. in a very short period of time. So, And this park uh, is, oh, go ahead. Uh, I, I was just going to say, they, they really should be memorialized. Absolutely, absolutely. Too. And we appreciate the Korean um, families or the Korean businesses helping yeah. us mm -hmm. and, and being part of of this also. The whole purpose of this is just to recognize the sacrifices that people have had, you know. I mean families too, it's it's a pretty big sacrifice. And then we were talking, the planning group was talking about it will be close to the teen center, close to the middle school, yeah, the that Cottonwood elementary, elementary school. school. You know, as time goes on, those of us who lived through the wars, the Vietnam War for myself and subsequent <coughs> wars, you know, as time goes on, that's forgotten as people, mm -hmm. generations pass away and new generations are born. And so this park is kind of a, a place where we feel like the youth, the children can learn. And it's going yeah. to be a peaceful place, mm -hmm. you know, a peaceful place for people to spend time and... and uh, Educational too. Do we have a couple mm -hmm. minutes? Yeah, absolutely. Because we're at the entrance, we we haven't got it all down pat. We're not anywhere as close to it yet. But at mm -hmm. the entrance, um, our draw all of our architectural drawing shows a semicircle out in the entrance. And in that semicircle, we're going to try and recognize those major conflicts that the United States has been involved in, mm -hmm. uh, starting with uh, Revolutionary right. War, eighteen twelve, mm -hmm. uh, obviously current wars, mm -hmm. uh, World War Two, Korean War. Mm -hmm. Right. But I don't know what all that, how that's going to be. So it's going to be an educational opportunity too. Mm -hmm. So since it is close to schools, they can come over there. Maybe we would hope and and, and then learn a little bit about the history in the United States. Right, right. Let's talk a little bit about. Um, we've we've gotten more than I guess we're thinking of more than twenty six thousand dollars, probably closing in on thirty thousand dollars already of in kind donations. And we mentioned Luke Sefton Engineering, who is um, engineering the project. But we also have a project manager, who is Keith Newton from High Performance Buildings, who is donating time. Uh, we have architect Jonathan Schock, Schock from CADWORK Studio, who is donating time also. Many drawings. I think I've brought a couple along, but uh, they probably can't show them. I don't know if you can. I think they've got them. I think they've been putting them up. Yeah. Oh, haven't they been mm -hmm. streaming yeah, them across? This, okay. The one that I wanted to show that I haven't seen on the screen yet is the actual plan. Oh, okay. This one, yeah. So this is is the upcoming plan. That yeah, and that's Jonathan Shock. And Jonathan that, yeah. has Jonathan's done a wonderful created. job. Yes, he and has. we had to kind of change it. We were uh, the restroom situation in the park. We were going to, we're building, well, we're upgrading restrooms there. That's so we um, 
we were thinking that that building might not be there, but now it's going to be there. That's correct. And so, which will be nice to have a facility like that close. You might add that the Navy is going to be, lo their, pa their monument is going to be located right close to the current bathroom. Okay. <laughs> for Ron Luce's <laughs> That's purposes. For Ron Luce. <laughs> Uh, Those Navy boys, huh? Yes. <laughs> the, the other thing we want to remember is the Heritage Land Survey. They're going to be doing. They're going to be doing all of. The oh, land. Heritage they're, Land Survey yes, is also. Yes, ma'am. They're doing all of the surveying. All the surveying. Yes. So that's pretty significant, also. That is a significant donation. So we truly want to thank all of yes, those businesses definitely. and and those individuals for their dedication to this park, also. Mm. So will there be a cost? You want me to say we're, okay. Yeah, we're looking at um, well, the the planning group uh, originally decided that seventy five dollars would be the cost for um, the inscriptions for the name, okay. and we'll be doing those inscriptions on a quarterly basis once we get started. So every quarter we'll be um, adding up the names. We can then get. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's one of the businesses out of the Phoenix area that Dave Blowert has worked with before. And we can then get those names inscribed on a quarterly basis. Mm -hmm. Now, um, of that $75, though, a portion of that, about a third of that, is going to be going into be set aside so that if an individual doesn't have the money to do something mm -hmm. to get their name inscribed, then they will be covered also. Okay, so, and you know, I've yeah. kind of missed the next break here. I think we better take it. Okay. We will be right back in just a moment. Thank you. Hit a receiver, the strike zone, the net. You taught him how to hit the upper corner. You even taught him how to hit the open man. But how much time have you spent teaching him what not to hit? Welcome back to Inside Cottonwood. I'm Mayor Diane Jones, your host, with Keith Vogler and Richard Faust talking about the Military Service Park. And it's not going to be the Cottonwood Military Service Park, even though the city is taking over responsibility for kind of its care into perpetuity Correct. as part of Garrison Park. But we also are, um, Keith's going over to talk to the Camp Verde Council on July 15th. We're hoping that Clarkdale and all the other communities um, collaborate with us because we are not calling this the Cottonwood Service Park. We are calling this the Verde Valley Military Service Park and it's for everyone in the Verde Valley. We want everybody in the Verde Valley to be part of this park. And so in order, so I want to stress that it is $75, at least that's that's not set in stone yet. The, the committee's still talking right. but that's the last discussion that we had. Um, but if a person cannot pay, there will be an endowment fund, and we want everybody's name to be on that park. Is there a requirement that they live in the Verde Valley or, or anything like that? Or we haven't really discussed that. As I know yeah, in Sedona, thought, there's oh, yeah. a requirement that we, they yeah, had to have. live in Sedona for a year. We've, we've said that we've said that we, we want these people either to be current or previous residents of the of the Verde Valley. We want to try and restrict it to the Verde Valley as much as we can. You know, the Verde Valley is a pretty large area, encompasses a pretty large area yes, in does. the state of Arizona. So. We're not really restricting it much at all. That's yeah. kind of a poor use of a term. But, right. And then the other part, like I said, they have to have been discharged under honorable conditions. Mm -hmm. And then the third part is uh, that we have to see some proof of that. And what we're asking for is uh, the most pop, most the best document would be a DD-214. Uh, but then some. Mm -hmm. There was a big fire in, in in that destroyed the records of 
previous years, mm -hmm. so some people may not have a DD-214 if they have a, a honorable discharge form or some other way of approving that they were, so we don't want anybody to come in and say, yeah, I, I, I'm a Medal of Honor winner from wherever, and, and it's just a lie. We don't want to. We don't want to let them get in there at all. So we need to have some way to do that. So the the, the form they need is the DD two fourteen. That would be the preferable one. Right. And there, yeah, but there, there are other ways that they can. If they don't have that form for some reason, there's other ways that they can yeah. work with. With you to, they, to maybe they get come in on the picture there. or something like right, that, you know, saying right. here I was in. So it's Korea inclusive. Or We're trying yeah. to be inclusive. That's correct. And that's yeah. the Verde yeah. Valley yeah. Park is an inclusive park. That's we correct. want yeah. others to participate. Now, if someone, this is going to be done in phases, and it's going to be pay as you go. So we are That's only, correct. the first part is going to be the flag, the American flag, the tall 65 foot flag is going to be the first piece along with the sign. We're planning, we don't have a date yet, but we're, the, the committee is planning a time to have a groundbreaking, so to speak. Yes. And so if someone wants to donate to the military service park and help us out, they could uh, make a check out to the Verde Valley Military Service Park. That's correct. Verde Valley Military Service Park, and they could mail it to? <laughs> Marine Corps League. The Marine Corps League. P.O. Box 2286. P.O. Box 2286. Cottonwood. Cottonwood. A6326. A6326. That's correct. We have a bank account set, a temporary bank account set up to take care of this um, with three different signers for that bank account. Um, and and. Should I say the rest of it? Hopefully, we can get some city, local city, mm -hmm. that will take over the funding and take mm -hmm. over the uh, managing the account. Yeah, and um, that's and those... that was because, as the mayor mentioned earlier, uh, we come and go, but the city is some city town is going to be here hopefully forever. Right. So. so yeah, we're working on those. We haven't quite got there yet, but we're working on that piece of it. So it's still, you know, it's still a work in progress. But we just Indeed. wanted to have this interview and let the public know what we're doing and that this park is going to be available. It's going to be a beautiful, peaceful, wonderful place to, to be and to learn about um, the service and, and the, the freedom that we all enjoy because of the That's sacrifice right. of the people who are in the service and their families also. So with that, um, I think Richard's going to have another episode coming up in October, November, and we'll know a little bit more about what's going on then and share that with the public at that time. We definitely will be doing that because it'll be right before Veterans Day, so it'll be one of those things we can try to get more information out. Uh, just for people's information also, there will be a six foot by four foot sign that will be located um, at the entranceway of that park area where the flag will go and where the actual military service park will be um, as they drive by if they're going to the library, Cottonwood Library, or to um, the Yavapai County um, Annex, uh, or the Recreation Center, or utilizing the outdoor pool, you can just drive over there next to the restroom. And there will be a, um, a sign out there within the weeks to come that will identify and show um, the exact uh, design and scope of the project, which will be really neat. Okay, well thank you gentlemen, both thank of you. you, for being on the sure. show. it's our appreciation. All right, and that's the way it is in Cottonwood. Thank you.